Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick review of this thing here. This is the T400 Pro Charger. Now I have been looking for a replacement for one of my favourite little chargers for quite some time. Uh, this is probably my little favourite two port charger. It's not new by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, this is the ISDT D2 and I really like ISDT chargers. I also really like the Sky RC stuff too. But this is one that's kind of on my bench all the time. And whenever I need a battery just charging for a quick flight or a test or something, this is the one that does the job. However, it's a little old fashioned. It doesn't have a touch screen. It doesn't have all the fancy smancy stuff that all the latest chargers do. And this is a little two port charger that not only you can use with a battery so it supports 11 to 18 volts so that's really a 3s or a 4s battery isn't it really uh, a well charged 3s battery at that um, but more crucially it actually has ac on the back so in this video let me go through how it comes in the box and let me kind of go through my thoughts and show you how it actually works um, for those of you that don't want to watch the whole thing uh, this is a capable charger but there are a number of things on here that would give me pause from recommending it wholeheartedly. But let me unpack it and show you how it comes. So while I unpack this, uh, you see mine, unfortunately, mine took quite a beating on its way. Uh, this one came from Banggood. I'll put a link down below. Uh, it really got the heck beat out of it. It wasn't in a box. Uh, it was in kind of a, a, a jiffy bag style thing. Uh, but luckily it isn't damaged. So I'll take it out and show you how it comes. Um, AC input on this is 100 to 240 volts. You can order it with different plugs. Uh, this one did come with the right plug for here in the UK. Uh, DC input is, uh, I think it says 10 to 18 volts on the website. Other on the side, it uh, says 11 to 18 volts. Uh, 200 watt charge mode on AC power. Uh, 200 watts in total for both the two channels. DC mode is 200 watts on each channel, so 400 watts. Discharge power is 10 watts, uh, will support smart batteries. Uh, charge current range is from 0 0.1 to 12 amps, assuming that the wattage will cope with that. Um, will support lithium ion, LiPo, LIFE, uh, high voltage cells, and will also do balancing as well, up to 500 milliamps per cell to do that. Dimensions is 145 by 105 by 64 millimeters. And inside here, as well as the charger, you also get a whole bag of bits. You also get the power cable. Again, you can choose the right power cable for where you live. You get a couple of flying leads. Uh, sadly, came with Deans on it. Blimey, I haven't seen Deans in a very long time. And a couple of adapters to take you from Deans to XT60. Balance boards as well, which I really like. The reason that I like balance boards is the pins over time do eventually start to wear out. Uh, they de get degraded. You know, there's current flowing through these things and they just get worn down and they can cause dodgy readings. And having a balance board like this means that you can replace the balance board rather than get into trouble with all of the pins getting worn out actually inside the charger like in the ISDT D2. So I'm going to have to solder some XC60s onto the end of this. I can't cope with uh, working with some kind of adapter. Now, a couple of things I found when I was doing the soldering and putting the XT60s on. Very disappointingly, the installation on the cables that are coming out of the charger are not silicon. Uh, they're plastic and they are melting. This kind of is an indication of some of the issues that I have with this charger. Some of the plastics feel very cheap and there are a couple of decisions that have been taken with that kind of longevity in mind. But let me show you how it works. Uh, here it is on one of my charging stations. There's my trusty ISDT D2 by the side. Uh, so again we can just power it from the mains. Love the fact it has a power switch. That's a really good touch comes up, the screen is beautiful and clear and very easy to navigate and you can just decide how you want it uh, set up, just click on the battery type that you want, you can store settings as well, so if you have specific batteries that you charge all the time, away you go. Now I have noticed a couple of weird things on this, if I just plug this 4S battery in and go into cell check, it's telling me that the first cell 
is massively overcharged. However, that's not the case. But once I start charging it, then it'll start reading it okay. And there are a couple of little things on this, like for example, the ability to set the low cutoff voltage when you're discharging things like HV batteries, which do point to a firmware update or two being needed. Now there is the port on the side, that allows you to plug it into a computer and maybe hopefully firmware updates will improve this but hopefully you can see here i was actually just double checking as i was shooting the video is that right uh, but no it's not the battery and all the cells are very very close which is how i tend to store them anyway to use it it's very simple and straightforward you just click on the icon for the battery type you have you have storage charge balance charge and also discharge and then you just use the plus and minus keys to select how you want it to work and then when you're ready just click go and it will initially start to charge the battery and then just test that everything's all working and then as you can see here it immediately started to read all the cells properly and to charge them so there's a lot of things that are quite nice on this. I like the idea of, again, this smaller AC and DC powered modern charger with a power switch on the back. That's a really cute idea. And again, I'm desperate for a modern charger to replace my trusty ISD TD2. Lots of options and presets and the navigation is really good. The screen is very simple and the speed and accuracy of the charge is good as well. I like also that there is the ability to balance a partially charged pack. That's a nice idea and something that I would normally use one of the LiPo checkers for uh, and this allows you to do it here too. I also like the use of leads and balance boards. It will prolong the life of the unit as long as those things are available as spares or you can get other versions of them and the connectors for these are pretty standard then it means that when pins start to misbehave and things like balance charges take a really long time or you get weird voltages being read on your batteries then it's time to just replace those things particularly the balance board and you get a new lease of life cell resistance measurement on this is a nice feature and also you've got the pc companion software that you can download onto your computer and plug it into the device and monitor it however i've never really met a pilot who uses that stuff in anger couple of things though that are stopping me from recommending this. First of all is the cheap feeling of a lot of the plastics on here. Uh, the lack of use of silicon in the wires just makes me feel like it's been built very much to a price point. A charger like this is an investment in the hobby. You're going to have this potentially for five, six years and you want it to be a loyal companion throughout that term and it's just going to work. And that raises a question mark for me with these cheaper plastics on things like the balance board and not using silicon coating wires for the external leads. Where else in here have they taken a shortcut? I think it should have come with XT60s and I also think it should have come with a couple of spare unsoldered leads so you can solder on whatever it is you use, whether it's Dean's XT30, XT90, so that it's easy and simple to swap different connectors over so irrespective of what batteries you're trying to charge you can use them simply too. The fan is very loud it's not something that you uh, would want to have running away in the background as you're recording audio or on a call for work so do be aware of that as well. So in summary this isn't a bad device but it's not really great either i think there are better options and maybe with a firmware update and a couple of better choices with the plastics and the wire this could have been a unit that would have got my full thumbs up thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end if you want to find out what i'm currently working on you can follow me on social media by searching for painless 360 in the usual places if you'd like to become part of the inner circle then you can become a patreon details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits check out the playlist section on the channel too i organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like introduction to or for beginners all of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know